So we continue with our contraceptive week. I know I took a two-day break because I didn't want to over flood you guys with a lot of information. But today I'm going to post three videos. And this is, of course, part three of the series. And the first video of today, grab a piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at transdermal patches as well as vaginal rings. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon so you never miss on such amazing content every time I post. This is of course part of Contraceptive Week. In our previous video, we did look at oral contraceptive pills. If you missed that video, I'll leave it tagged at the very beginning because it's actually the most fundamental part or the core basics of contraceptives. I also looked at contraceptive basics in part one. I'll leave both videos tagged at the end such that you can head over and watch those videos and this video will begin to make much more sense. So remember that contraception is pretty much the intentional prevention of conception through various devices, sexual practices, chemicals, drugs, or any surgical procedures. We already talked about the different classifications of contraceptives. We have already discussed about hormonal-based contraceptives. Pretty much we've discussed about the combined hormonal contraceptive pills. And in this lecture, we will talk about the patches, the vaginal rings. And in subsequent lectures, we'll talk about the injectables, uh, the implants, as well as the intrauterine systems. We also have the non-hormonal-based methods, which I will talk about in length in another video during this same week, probably tomorrow. And you also have the surgical methods like vasectomy and female sterilization that we'll also talk about. So what's it about the transdermal patches and the vaginal rings? Remember that these are going to be consisting of both estrogen and a progestin. So they are combined estrogen progestin contraceptives and these can be administered to transdermal root or through the vaginal root and they can be available as skin patches, they can be available as vaginal rings. The reason why this works, especially with the skin patches, is remember most of these hormones are made out of steroids and steroids are permeable to the skin. They can actually go through the skin, which is why it's quite easy for them to work. Remember that the efficacy of these methods is the same as for the oral contraceptives. So the pregnancy rate after one year is uh, roughly about 0.3% with perfect use and about 9% with typical use. That's inconsistent use, like the what you have in the real world. The ideal setup would be 0.3% and in the real world it would be roughly around 9%. Adherence is much better than with the oral contraceptives because if it's with a patch, you just put it once every week for three weeks instead of the contraceptives that you have to remember to take each and every single day. On the ring as well, you put it once uh, for like three weeks and then you can even remove it for the breakthrough bleeding to happen. And the you can also institute a quick start protocol similar to that what we used in the oral contraceptive section. And like I said, if you didn't watch that video, head over there because most of these terms will sound like Greek to you. Then if either contraceptive method actually started at any time other than the first five days of the menstrual cycle, just like with any other type of steroid contraceptive, you want to use backup contraceptive methods like condoms for the next seven days. And breakthrough bleeding is quite uncommon when the transdermal or the ring contraception is actually being used. And if the breakthrough bleeding does happen, it typically tends to decrease within about two to six months of use. And there is some contraindications uh, to the transdermal patches and the vaginal rings, and they are quite similar to what we discussed already in the oral contraceptive lecture. Now, what's the mechanism of action? Remember, these are going to be consisting of hormones. So there is a central effect because of the hormones that are produced. Remember that these are going to be leaking estrogen and a progestogen into the system, and these are going to be suppressing the release of the FSH and the LH. FSH being follicle stimulating hormone that is meant to stimulate the development of a follicle and LH being luteinizing hormone that is meant to prevent the ovulation. So 
these hormones are pretty much going to be preventing follicular development. They're going to be preventing ovulation. Remember that estrogen is going to be inhibiting both gonadotrophin releasing hormone that's produced from the hypothalamus, as well as a follicle stimulating hormone that's produced from the anterior pituitary gland. And the high levels of estrogen are going to be suppressing FSH, and therefore they're going to be preventing the follicular development, and they're also going to be helping to maintain the stability of the endometrium. In terms of progesterone, this is pretty much going to be inhibiting uh, the gonadotrophin releasing hormone as well as luteinizing hormone. So it's going to prevent that surge that happens just before ovulation. It's also quite helpful to counteract the adverse effects of estrogen on the endometrium. Remember, you may have an endometrial hyperplasia and heavy uh, withdrawal. In essence, you may have an unstable endometrium, but the progesterone actually tends to stabilize this. Then you may also have some peripheral effect of these hormones. They can cause the endometrium to become atrophic and hostile for implantation to take place. They may also alter the cervical mucus and prevent ascent of the sperm into the uterine cavity. So let's go into detail about the transdermal patch. Remember that two contraceptive patches are actually available and the medication actually approximately releases the similar doses daily for seven days and you have different sizes. You have one patch that's going to be consisting of ethanol estradiol as well as no gestromine and is going to be producing the ethanol estradiol at 35 micrograms or containing the 35 micrograms and the no gestromine is going to be an active metabolite of no gestamate which is going to be 140 micro 150 rather micrograms and has a surface area of 14 uh, square centimeters. Mm -hmm. Then you also have another patch that consists of levonorgestrel as well as ethanol estradiol. It consists of 120 micrograms of levonorgestrel and 30 micrograms of ethanol estradiol. And this is about 28 uh, cubic centimeters in size. And after one week that the patch has been placed, the patch can actually be removed because we're going to be putting it every week. And remember our model that we talked about with, when we talked about the oral contraceptive pills where we have uh, a three weeks on and one week off. In this case, you're only changing the patch every week for the first three weeks. Then the subsequent fourth week, you can actually leave the patch out to allow for the breakthrough bleeding. So after one week, the patch is going to be removed and a new patch is going to be applied to a different area of the skin. Remember that after the three patches are used, we don't put a patch on the fourth week to allow for the withdrawal bleeding. And these are going to be producing hormonal levels of estrogen and progestin that are actually much more consistent and constant than we see with the oral contraceptive pills. And though the levels of the steroids are 60% higher than that what we see with the combined oral contraceptive pills. Remember the contraceptive efficacy, the incidence of bleeding, the benefits, the risk, the adverse effects with the patches are similar to what we discussed already with the oral contraceptive pills. But the only big difference is that these ones have a better adherence because you don't have to remember to take them daily like the oral contraceptive pills. You can take them weekly, though they are actually much more expensive than the oral contraceptive pills. And the patch may actually be less effective if a woman is weighing more than 90 kg. So in someone with a body mass index that's equal or greater than 30, then you generally want to avoid the transdermal patch. And these patients should be advised to have any backup contraceptive method concurrently for at least a week if uh, two days or more than two days has elapsed since the, a new patch was actually applied. So here's an example of a patch. And remember that these patches should not be placed on the breast because it's a risk of breast cancer. They can be placed on the arm, they can be placed on the thigh. Then in terms of vaginal rings, remember that these are going to be these flexible, soft and transparent latex free plastics that have a diameter of about 54 millimeters and a cross sectional diameter of about four millimeters. They are actually two types that are available on the market. We have one that consists of etonogestrel as well as ethnoestradiol. And this is a three-week ring that's going to be releasing about 120 micrograms of etonogestrone, etonogestrel rather, which is a progestin, and 15 micrograms of ethnoestradiol, which is an estrogen a day. And a new ring can actually be used each month. Then we have one that's going to be... Uh, going to consist of sejogesterone sege acetate as well as ethanol estradiol. And this is a year long ring that's actually going to be releasing about 150 micrograms of sejogesterone uh, acetate, which is a progestin, as well as 13 micrograms of ethanol estradiol a day. And a new ring can actually be given to these patients once a year. 
So both of these types of rings can be placed in uh, and for three weeks and then removed for one week to allow for the withdrawal bleeding. Uh, same thing even with the one that you use for one year. You can actually remove it and leave it out for one week and then you reinsert the same ring after one week of the withdrawal bleeding that has taken place. Then the insertion and the removal of the ring is quite easy, so it actually doesn't need to specially fit in any special place of the vagina. Then the benefits, the risks, the adverse effects are similar to what we discussed with the oral contraceptive pills. Like I said, if you haven't watched that video, I'll leave it tagged at the end of this lecture. But the patient adherence is actually better because it's actually inserted monthly rather than taking the the pills daily as we see with the oral contraceptive pills and the woman that may wish to remove the vaginal ring at times other than the three weeks can remove it however if the, the ring is actually removed for more than three hours then the woman should actually use a backup type of contraceptive methods for the next seven days the key thing to remember with these contraceptive uh, things that are based on hormones is seven days and if they have started this contraceptive later than five days of their menstrual cycle, the first five days of their menstrual cycle, they have to use backup contraception for the next seven days. And the woman actually insert and remove the rings themselves, so there's no fitting by a clinician that is required. So it's very easy for women to actually abandon this type of contraceptive pill, or rather contraceptive method. It's also quite similar even with the transdermal patches. They can just choose to stop when they wish. Then the hormones that are released by the vaginal rings are absorbed through the vaginal epithelium. And when a vaginal ring is actually used, the hormonal levels are actually relatively constant, just like with the transdermal patches. Here's an example of a um, vaginal ring. As you can see, it's round and it's actually quite flexible on the second image that is depicted on your picture. I really hope you enjoyed this lecture on transdermal patches and vaginal rings. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such amazing content every time I post. To Zambia and beyond, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Until next time, bye-bye.